Welcome back to Sparesbox Unrolled. In this week's episode, our R32 drift build gets all the exciting stuff. I'm talking exhaust, turbos, gates, screamers, the whole shebang. Leon's car is picked up, plus I decontaminate the interior of a Putra 200 series. Wow, we were. Nice. <laughs> Well, first cab off the rank, Sam, Sandy's Skyline. Mm. Now, Sandy came to me rather sheepishly, asking me to make an exhaust for this I thing. Imagine. You've heard the arguments. I think this thing is too low. But unfortunately, because Sandy insists on having it that low, it means that we have to make an exhaust to put up with that. Yep. So I've decided to do it out of the two pipes, and we get into that now, or Sandy puts the intake manifold on. Nice. With the Skyline behind me, the motor is in. All that's left to do is plug everything back up. Now I've already started a little bit. I've got the wiring for the alternator and the starter motor in there and a little bit of the coolant plumbing just because it's a bit tedious and, and under the engine there. But today I'm hoping to get both the manifolds on, mount up the turbo and then get it ready for a bit of intercooler piping and some exhaust. So let's make it happen, eh? Skid soon. What the f***? <sighs> oh, that's so f***. Behind me, the Skyline is on the hoist. It's exhaust day. The turbo was mounted the other day and all our aeroflow parts have arrived. We've got a 50 cell cat. We're doing a three inch system down to two, two and a quarter inches, but I'll let James run you through the kind of gist of what we're doing. But it'll sound good, I hope. Will it sound good? We're doing twin pipes in it. There's just too much work for not me. Nothing's gonna get done with me standing here, so I'm gonna go stand over there. When you're doing a custom exhaust like this, obviously you're starting from scratch, you're starting with a selection of bends and a few components, so everything has to be worked out and measured and made to fit, which can be a little bit tedious. On this car, we are using the dump pipe the car had originally, but we're adding a flex bend in there, just so obviously when this thing scrapes on the inevitable speed bump, it doesn't break anything, and it allows for a little bit of movement there. Then we're going from a three inch pipe down to two, two and a quarter pipes. That's just for ground clearance because Sandy's car is too low. We're doing that just to try and maximize the ground clearance the exhaust has. So that'll go to two pipes from about mid car all the way to the back. No mufflers. Don't really know how it's gonna sound. I don't, don't have high hopes for it, but there's only one way to find out, so. We've gone ahead and put the old GTX 2871R ball bearing turbo back on, as well as a TurboSmart 38mm wastegate. Of course it's going to get a screamer, you'd be stupid not to get a screamer. I mean you probably wouldn't be stupid, but I'm stupid, so we've gone ahead and put a screamer on it. James has buttoned up the exhaust, we've got twin pipes after the 50 cell Aeroflow Cat under there. No mufflers because race car. Not even race car. We put, it, we put a cat in there because street car, but no mufflers because race car. Balances out, right? A common fault with the RVs is the coil pack harness crumbling to pieces, and my old one was no exception. I've gone ahead and ordered an OEM one from Nissan. All the plugs are fresh, looks the part, does the thing that coil pack harnesses should do. Next to that, there's a Plasma Man forward-facing plenum. I really don't know why we went with this. It looks good and 
the internet loves it. We've gone ahead and ordered a full set of 900cc Deutschwerk injectors. This is gonna help massively with the flow of fuel and the amount of boost that we're pushing through this motor. But we'll find out in the tune if this is really gonna make the power that we want. The final steps to getting this running you will see in coming episodes. We've got a fresh Mishimoto radiator to go in and a little bit of plumbing to do with that. Um, other than that, it's still not running. And we're getting closer though, getting closer. But stick around, I'll be skidding in no time to a wall. Don't know, maybe not. They all say I'm going into a wall, I probably will. But that's the fun. Mate, that exhaust looks killer. And I reckon with a little bit of elbow grease from probably you and Sandy, that thing should be running soon. Running into things perhaps, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. no perhaps about it. It's I, I give that exhaust maybe two hours before it's in pieces again. The car is very low. It almost scrapes just going over the hub of this bloody hoist. Almost scrapes. It does scrape. It does scrape, that's right. Now, recently Leon took me away from work. Well, work is a loose phrase. We went out of the office. We went down and sat at Sydney Docks for many, many hours picking up his new toy, which is epic. Mm. We're talking, like last week we said, full slicks, huge wang, center locks, left-hand drive, race car. And we've alluded to it, we've shown the people little bits and pieces. But I think it's time for a proper look. I think it's time. Well, it's a lovely Thursday morning here at Sparesbox HQ. The 200th back from Cape York. The car trailer's hooked up. And I'll give you a clue, Leon's in the car. We're going to pick up yet another one of his projects. And this is one we honestly never thought we'd see the day. So it's going to be pretty exciting. I'll give you a hint. We're picking this up from the uh, the docks in Matraville. That's right, it came from overseas, and you won't see many of these in the country. Let's go take a look. Down here at the port, there's Leon. Masked up, COVID safe, it's important. And uh, now we have to find where this special vehicle is. Somewhere, I'll tell you that much for free. Just have a look at the, like, it's hard to believe how high these things are until you're standing under them. It's crazy. There's, there's a lot on. Just excited to load this car up and get out of here. Very exciting. It's almost race car time. And somewhere in there, is the new car. Ah, we haven't told the people yet, but just some clues. Center lock, VBS, carbon, bumpers. Oh, the people don't know what they're getting yet. How exciting. The good news, the bad news, she doesn't start. Oh no. First side. Here we go. Oh, oh. That's pretty good. It there it good. is. You wouldn't read about it. Leon's bought himself a GT3. Porsche Cup car. We're talking full cage, has done racing, center lock, left hand drive, all the way from, where did this bad boy come from? New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, you just said, you know what? Australia doesn't have what I want. I'm going overseas, baby. There's not many of them. I'm just so excited that this doesn't run and now we get to push it, that's great. No. I'll just film, you push, yeah, I'll just make sure I capture everything. Mm -hmm. So a quick jump start with a forklift. Be the best or worst decision I've ever made. So behind me, we have the latest addition to the spares box fleet that I'm super, super excited about. It is one of 79 made in 2004. It's one of five ever, that ever came to Australia. It has the famous Le Mans winning Mezga motor. It's raw, it's 1160 kilos, it's 400 horsepower, it's eight and a half thousand RPM. It's got everything you could want in a race car. So we've been slowly stepping up the cars in the spares box fleet. You may have seen the Golf go around. That's quick, it's fun, it's all wheel drive, it's got air conditioning and cup holders. 
but it's not really a raw race car. This is the next evolution in ambition, taking over skill. This is the car that will push me to the limits. That's definitely gonna test my ambition versus my talent. And I think the car's probably always gonna win. I'm never gonna master this car, but I'm definitely gonna give it a try. So this car is all about the pinnacle of Porsche had to offer its customers in the early 2000s for a gentleman driver race car. It has massive slick tires. It has center locking hubs. It has stripped out interior. It has FIA approved cage. It's got even heck, it's even got one wiper. They've got rid of everything that's not needed for speed. Sure, this thing you might say, hey, it's got the RS motor. Basically it does, but it still has titanium con rods. It still revs to eight and a half grand. It's a beast, it has a GT2 box. So all just road car bits. So what makes it fast? Sure, 400 horsepower and 3.6 liters. That's a pretty good output in anyone's language. But what makes it fast are the things that Porsche has spared no compromise on in turning into a race car. It's things like the Saks remote reservoir coilover shocks, adjustable for damp, dampening and rebound. That makes it fast. Massive slick tires, fully adjustable camber caster, all of the angles, suspension. It's got a low ride height. It's got the roll cage for a stiff body. It's got the air jacks when you come into the pit. It's got the massive Brembo brakes that slow you down to monster speed and huge air ducts that keep the brakes cold over and over again. It's a visceral experience. 400 horses hanging over the rear axle in the completely wrong position, ready to spin you round like a pendulum. With all these go fast bits, this extreme race car, the only way to do it, to test it, to push myself to the limits, more than the car, is to hit a track like Bathurst. The famous Mount Panorama will push me and the car to the limit and it's gonna be an amazing experience. So before I hit a crazy track like Bathurst, I need seat time, a lot of seat time and probably some tuition. So we're gonna head out to Sydney Motorsport Park and cut some laps, get some great instruction and see if I can get to grips with this thing. This is not a cookie cutter Porsche Carrera. The car behind me, it's one of 79 made in 2004. It's one of five that came to Australia. It is a pure thoroughbred race car. Sack Duck Squishy Beetle. Yeah. I wonder if the people are gonna be disappointed. Was it what they expected? Is it not? I don't really know. One thing I can promise you is that in truly on fashion, that car isn't gonna stay the way that it is for very long because he can't help but tinker. Does like playing. Yeah, he really does. Now, I think that car suits Leon perfectly as he is a Porsche freak. He oh loves God. the things. You seen his house? It's just Porsche artwork everywhere. We've had pictures of Porsches showing oh up my God. by delivery drivers the last week and they're all of Porsches. <laughs> last week you saw how the outside of that 200 series was and unfortunately the inside was no better i stunk it stunk and even i think it's gonna yeah, stink for a stink. while <laughs> yeah i still stink <laughs> this week i tackled the interior which was an absolute biohazard and completely putrid let's get into it not the car because that's disgusting get into the video last week in unrolled you saw us decontaminate the outside of the 200 after we got back from a recent trip this week on Unrolled, we're tackling the inside, which is ground zero for what I'm sure is a lot of diseases. We've even got the doors shut for everyone's protection. It is that rancid in there. I'm going to have to get a hazmat suit on and decontaminate the rest of it. And it is absolutely putrid. Just like last time, we've raided the Meguiar's catalog. We've got heavy duty cleaner for the door jams. We've got a whole bunch of odor refreshers and vinyl cleaners for the interior. Plus, because it's so disgusting, we've got the Meguiar's air refresher too to put through the system and hopefully get rid of that disgusting month old mud smell. Let's get stuck in. So we've got a fair bit to do inside this 200. It's actually much worse in here than what I remember. Uh, so I've got a couple of hours of work to do. We've started off just vacuuming some parts of the interior, which is gonna help get rid of that loose dirt and dust out of most of the soft surfaces, the floors, the footwells, and the door cards. Um, and then we're gonna move on to actually cleaning that stubborn dirt and that kind of thing. There's a couple of ways you can do this. We've opted for the Meguiar's heavy duty multi-purpose cleaner, which is perfect for your interior and exterior applications. The best thing about this product is that it's not gonna stain or bleach any of your carpets, uh, your cloth seats or anything like that. So it really is safe to just spray everywhere and should make this cleaning a little bit easier. So you saw the amount of filth that had fallen under these back row seats. Now, not once in the three weeks that I was living out of this car did I actually fold these seats down. So it just goes to show the amount of dirt and dust that can fall into those hard to reach places. So it's worth taking the extra time, fold the seats up, vacuum and clean under there because that's the sort of stuff that's gonna eat its way into your carpet and smell like ass. Next up is the interior. I'm talking dash surfaces, pillar trims, kick panels, up under the steering wheel cluster, 
all those kind of areas. And for that, we're using the Meguiar's quick interior detailer. Now, this coupled with the microfiber cloth really is the perfect option for you. It smells amazing. So good that I might actually use some as a deodorant. But uh, this is gonna be perfect. Leaves a nice shine. Gonna cut through any grease, fingerprints, that kind of thing. The best part is once you've done a deep clean with the spray and microfiber, they also do the quick wipes version as well, which is perfect for little spot cleans. So I recommend everyone grab one of these, stick it in the door pocket, so that if you do need to do a little touch up, good to go. We're almost finished, but there's three final steps that are gonna take this car from an eight out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. The first is, well, quite frankly, I stink and so does the car. So the Meguiar's odor eliminator is getting sprayed on every soft surface. I'm talking headliner, seats, door car inserts, and the carpet. We're gonna kill that odor. Next up, glass cleaner. The Perfect Clarity by Meguiar's is gonna help get all our glass crystal clear. And then the final cherry on top is gonna be the Meguiar's Air Refresher. And this is as simple as starting the car with your aircon on full blast. Let this guy go, come back in 15 minutes, and it will have cleaned out all your aircon vents. So, let's get stuck in. Two hundred behind me has never smelt so good, and I've got to be honest, I don't reckon I have either. Now we're just letting this thing air out for another fifteen minutes, and that is the interior job done. Now, if you did want to see how we did the exterior, that was in last week's unrolled, and I'll put it in the link above my head. Otherwise, if you want to check out any of the products we've used in today's interior detailing, check the description below where I will link them all for you. Now we've got a stack more to do on this two hundred, including a full mechanical overhaul. So you're going to have to stay tuned for that. Otherwise, back to the couch. Well. That's another week here in the Spares Box Workshop. And another week wrapped up for Unrolled. Now, if the guys out there are loving the 200 series content, we have got a host more coming, including performance upgrades, which is gonna be pretty cool, and a full mechanical overhaul because, well, it needs it. Plus, we've got a new face joining us in the Spares Box Workshop to help me spin some spanners on our turbo diesel project cars. <laughs>